Yo, what up everyone? As promised yesterday, I'm doing a follow-up video on the some of the event units. Uh, <coughs> I'll be covering uh, the three new available ones, so the uh, Dark uh, Hard Magician, I think, Vivachel, whatever it's called, uh, that you can get from the monster story right here, uh, at, the, at the last page. Uh, I'm also gonna be covering the a uh, water tail who is currently available on the banner and whether you shoot someone or not and what he is useful for in my opinion and the last monster of course i'll be covering the uh, window courier that you can get from this event and whether you should just uh, settle with having just one copy of her or you want to invest a little bit more tickets uh, repeat the quest and stuff like that to getting several copies of her for higher awakening levels so yeah, uh, first of all, the so first of all, uh, I'm gonna cover her skills very quickly again. So her first skill, nothing special, a little higher multiplier than usual. Uh, her second skill, uh, the covers HP of a selected target by fifty one point eight percent. Removes one harmful effect, and uh, after that, uh, heals all uh, allies next to her for 38.5% excluding the one you selected so the target you select will get a little bit higher heal but uh, the rest of the targets will still get 38.5% heal and her third skill uh, level 2 defense up for 16 seconds to everyone close to her and if the target is a creature this means that it will not work on other enemies in PvP, for example, and only works on various uh, mobs in the scenario or like TOA and stuff like that. So only for PvE purposes, it will also give you a level 2 attack down. Actually, I'm not even sure if it will work on TOA in this case, since TOA does have monsters. So it's hard to say. It could be just purely creatures, meaning that... Uh, anything that is uh, available in the teacher book, so stuff like bosses, uh, uh, stuff like the, what are they called, a Ruins Guardian, like for the, uh, what's it called, Hero Area, or the Queen Spider Nest, meaning the bosses and stuff like that, so only creatures it seems, it probably will not work on uh, TOA units when you think about it, and it will definitely not work on uh, other summoners uh, units, so keep that in mind. And her passive, of course, is uh, on 3 minute cooldown and it acts very similar to Cleave's passive as well as the Water Beetle's passive. And it basically prevents death and gives you Endure for 15 seconds. But uh, differently from them, you also get uh, a follow up skill right when it activates, and this means that. Uh, she plays a harp to recover HP, so essentially she also recovers HP by, since this procs uh, 3 times, uh, I think it should be closer to 56% of max HP, as well as provides level 1 attack up, this means that she is better built with a squishy unit in your team, as just having that unit killed will actually give you more damage potential, as she will buff attack from this passive. And uh, her ultimate, of course, very similar to the third skill, heals a lot uh, using this skill, uh, gives some defense up, and also has every second healing. I haven't tested the uh, how long the every second healing works for, but uh, my opinion on this ultimate is not too good, and I don't think she should be used with her ultimate as well as in a soldering slot. Uh, I see her skills, uh, both of the skills being uh, pretty useful, this means that you should potentially place her in the other two slots, as a soldering slot should be reserved for monsters that either boost uh, cooldowns or only have one useful skill, so for example in my case like a Bastet, I feel like her second skill is not that important and she's only used for shields, so she does take the uh, soldering slot for me in most cases. So yeah, where you can use this unit? Uh, the first thought, of course, just because of a third skill only working on creatures, uh, it will be mostly used for PvE purposes, meaning uh, where she can excel is, for example, hero area, uh, countering those mini-bosses, and having a lot of sustain, since 
just going uh, heading into the mini boss can be uh, a little scary and with her third skill she provides defense up and attack uh, down uh, with her third skill as well as has sustain with her second skill uh, meaning that she in most cases will be enough to sustain your team and you can actually go for a little more of a damage option for the rest of your monsters as I know uh, hero area especially mini bosses if you're looking to solo them uh, they can be a little uh, scary in terms of damage they deal and I know I've tried soloing a lot of mini bosses and I only were able to do a few since a lot of them have that uh, for example self healing which you will need a heal block for that means it already takes another unit and you lose on sustain or on damage and simply are unable to do it so uh, it's useful in that part uh, the second thing is of course dungeons I feel like she will be a very good dungeon debuffer but it's mostly aimed at earlier games since uh, in the late game once you are able to uh, do all of those dungeons uh, with speed clear so basically going with high damage units uh, paired with something like a Bastet or something or a Helia who will just increase your damage potential uh, that safety will not be needed anymore uh, so for starters she will be good but eventually you will replace her with uh, more damage options for faster clears so yeah as for pvp i tried to think of a good place to use her but just the fact that her third skill uh, it sort of only works in pve and basically if you take that attack bar down or rather attack down part from her uh, she has a skill with a very long cooldown which only provides uh, defense up for 16 seconds so barely above half of the cooldown meaning that uh, almost half of the time this defense up will not even be up on all of your units so I'm not a big fan of her in PvP uh, I think she could have some potential if you haven't summoned the water beetle based on her passive but even then i feel like this could be a bit too situational in my opinion uh yeah and of course just because of this passive exists just like with the water beetle uh she's very hardly usable with cleave so if you do main cleave uh she won't be much use i feel since uh, first of all her passive is uh, pretty much identical to cleave the first part at least uh, second of all, this skill is very similar to both the water and the wind cleave. So, if you run the wind cleave, you do have the AoE defense up on his third skill. Uh, if you go for the uh, water cleave, you do have attack down on, I think it's first and third skill, or could just be the first skill. I'm, I forgot a bit. But yeah, uh, she, she looks like she just stacks up on these similar effects that Cleave already provides so I'm not a big fan of her being used with Cleave in general and I know for a fact that I will most likely not be building her for anything except the hero area mini bosses feel since her, I do like her second skill but uh, it's very similar to a unit that I already have and that is the uh, wind uh, howl or lulu so for healing I feel like Overall, she's pretty similar uh, when comparing Rewatch's second skill with uh, Lulu's third skill. Uh, but what Lulu has is also her second heal, which tops up a little more uh, HP compared to Rewatch's. And I feel like if you are going purely for healing, uh, that uh, Water Hull will be a little better, since of course the second skill also provides defense buff, which is similar to Rewatch's uh, third skill. So yeah, uh, not a big fan of the unit overall, however it for sure has its uses and it will definitely be better with Orbia and Kina. Uh, and now uh, jumping into the banner unit, so the Taylor, uh, you can summon him for, you can get a guaranteed one from 200 mystical scrolls, but of course the chance is uh, highly increased for all summons. So uh, his first skill, of course, regular multiply, but also has 6% chance to give frostbite. Uh, the squall, his second skill, it is runs the enemy attack, deep, deal damage based on his defense, applies frostbite to the target. So level to frostbite and 70% chance to knock back. 
And his third skill, rolls and beat out ice stones to deal damage based on its defense to nearby enemies and applies freeze if the target is frostbitten. Provokes nearby targets uh, with a certain chance and applies defense up. And his ultimate, very similar to the third skill, but I'm not a big fan of his ultimate either. So where can this guy be used? Uh, first, uh, I want to mention that this unit, uh, very similar to Viva Chill, is in my opinion pretty bad with Cleave. Although he provides defense, uh, which means that Cleave can do a little bit more damage, uh, his skills sort of uh, overlap with Cleave as well. So for example, uh, the Wind Cleave does have defense up, so you can stack defense up, but uh, the further stacks don't really provide that much, so saying you do get level 4 defense up, if you apply that additional defense up, it only uh, gives 2% uh, defense extra. So it's first of all, this makes his ultimate not that useful compared to just using his third skill. And uh, second of all, if you do stack those defense buffs, they eventually have less and less use. So there's that. Uh, the second part is he also provokes, which is something Cliff already does in, on most of the elements, I think. So, uh, first of all, this already overlaps, and if Cliff provokes and then uh, Teo provokes the same target, uh, you're pretty much losing out on the uh, provoke potential there and overall provoke amounts, as they just have the same skill, which does not stack, since provoke doesn't have any stacks really, it only uh, attacks the target that provoked them last. So if you do provoke uh, with Cleave and later provoke with Teo, he will just switch to Teo, meaning uh, your Cleave's uh, skill was pretty useless to begin with. So yeah, uh, to preface, uh, first of all, definitely better with uh, Kina and what's the other one called? Orbia. Uh, a little lackluster with Cleave, if you are meaning him. And for the users, uh, I've thought of it a little harder uh, since yesterday. I actually think that he could be pretty useful in PvP. Of uh, course, first of all, he will be very useful in uh, the seal dungeon, but you shouldn't summon a unit just because it's useful in one of the PvE dungeons. But if you do get him, just keep in mind that uh, his first and second skill are super good for the seal boss. And you will want to build him on high attack speed if you're looking to maximize on that. Uh, but for other uses, I feel like uh, he could be pretty good in Arena. Uh, and I'm talking about the regular Arena, not the live Brawl Arena. Uh, since in the regular Arena, uh, the the buffs you get and the conditions are a little bit more uh, controlled, I'd say, and you have more uh, more control of the combos you can perform, meaning that if you take uh, a defense buffer like Teo, uh, the enemy will have a ha way harder time uh, stripping the debuff for, uh, stripping that defense, I mean, for example, uh, since First of all, you're going into a static set of uh, units, and if you just see that there is no stripper on their team, you're pretty much safe to bring him and not have any consequences. And second of all, since it's more controlled, you are able to dish out those combos a bit more easily without the enemy team ruining, and just have more control of the combo uh, potential, basically. And yeah, uh, of course, this means that in Brawl Arena, I feel like he's a little bit worse uh, since the enemy can pretty easily uh, strip that defense up if you uh, use your third skill or your ultimate. And for the units that would counter him, of course, a lot of them are mostly nat 5s, but they are pretty easily obtained on nat 5s, especially the ones we have from Banner. So uh, the main uh, ones I'm seeing is, of course, the Praha or the Juno, which was heavily summoned for sure. Of course, I'm not covering the light and dark nat 5s or the nat 5s that weren't easily obtainable, so they are there, they do work, but they're just not that popular since they weren't easily obtainable, so I'm not gonna cover here. Of course, you have the Water Lich, but I doubt anyone uses Water Lich in PvP. Uh, there's the Light in Nogami, but also not a big fan of him in PvP. Of course, Chivo is a good counter since uh, he does 
uh, AoE strip on his third skill and blocks effects on his second skill, so he actually has two ways to counter you. And some other options, Royal Griffon, uh, the Vagabond, not really used in PvP, the Fire Mermaid, everyone should have from the event, but even then I don't think she is that good of a counter, plus she's a fire element, so uh, Theo will have an easier time countering her. And yeah, other than that, not really much. Uh, she can strip, but she is mostly used for PvE, so the seal mostly. And I don't think too many people built these two, so yeah. Overall, I think there are decent counters, but most of them are map fives, and most of them are general strippers. So if you do see a stripper, I would be very cautious bring him into the battle. Uh, but if you do not see the stripper, I'd say it's a pretty safe pick to go in with him. And the second uh, part of content I see him being very useful at is the battlefield. Uh, first of all, because there are a lot of group battles there, uh, that defense buff you get from him will stack up a lot. Since from what I am understanding, it will apply to all nearby uh, summoners and their monsters, meaning... If you do those like 44, 66 or something in the middle uh, at the start of the game, that defense buff will bring a lot of use, especially if the enemy team does not have that many strippers or the strippers are only the liable or for example Cinderell target and not AoE strippers. So that will be a very useful skill there. But overall you will need to tune your team a little bit towards Tear since uh, in a lot of cases, you can just bring Teo and expect him to work since he does need a decent cooldown setting skills. He does need a strip if you want to make use of the frostbites and the freezes. And yeah, uh, whether you want to summon him uh, is up to you. I would only recommend summoning him if you play uh, Orbia or Kina and be a little cautious summoning him if you play Cleave since I feel like he will overall up with his skills a bit, so yeah. And for uh, the last unit is of course the Charlotte, which you can get from uh, the event that's happening right now. So her first skill, uh, not much different, except a little high multiplier. Uh, her second skill is an AoE stun with a 62% chance. Uh, her third skill, uh, very long cooldown, not doing fine then. Uh, summons a guardian angel to attack enemies within the AD at three times. Each hit has a certain chance to apply skill deceleration and mana cost up. So, 67% chance uh, to apply level 1, but it hits three times. So, on average, uh, you're looking at like exactly level 2 of each effect. And for reference, that means that you'll be looking at around 37% longer cooldowns on units. And around 2 higher mana costs if applied on your summoner for the soul linked unit. So, hmm. Then I think. First of all, you do need a stripper with her, since if you do not uh, have a stripper that can either move the will or various cleansing effects, she instantly loses pretty much all of her value. But as for where she can be good at, oh, of course, I'm going to just quickly uh, cover this, of course. Uh, this is her passive that has a 10 second cooldown. And this means that essentially there will be a teddy bear uh, appearing every 10 seconds or somewhere. And uh, the target with the highest attack power will also get additional uh, skill deceleration and mana cost up effects. So the highest damage unit uh, will pretty much permanently have this effect as long as you don't have any cleanse or immunity on your team. And her ultimate, I've read it, it's not that good. It's pretty much a copy of the second skill, or rather third skill, but with a little bit uh, extra duration as well. No, not duration, right? Is there a higher duration? Yeah, it is uh, 20 seconds, and on average you're looking at 2.75, so a bit closer to level 3 of this effect. And whether he's... So yeah, uh, for ult, I think she, the ult is a little bit better than the rest of the units, but 
uh, it needs insane setup so first of all you will need to do an aoe strip or make sure that the enemy does not have any uh what's it called a immunity or cleanse that he can uh, remove the effects of but if you manage to pull this combo of uh, using her second skill or rather third skill into her ultimate uh, you're potentially looking at maximizing the mana cost uh, at five meaning that all skills of the enemy summoner's souling unit will cost five mana higher and this pretty much disables them from being able to use a lot of those skills especially cheaper skills if the skill only costs two or three mana now it's suddenly jumping to seven or eight will completely ruin the enemy as for skill deceleration i'm not a big fan of this skill compared to the mana cost up but it's definitely an option as well uh, i feel like the mana cost is a bit more uh, impactful here uh, however you will uh, disable the enemy a little bit uh, for those longer battles first it will not matter if you are looking to end the battle in one turn meaning that if you run an insane uh, nuke setup where you are pretty much looking to end the battle in in your monsters as well as your soling monster using the skill once uh, although it's hard to have that setup i know there are definitely teams that run that but she will be a little better in those uh, longer drawn out battles where you can make use of the uh, this effect for a longer time meaning that if you are looking to bring her i would recommend bringing her with more bruiser comp uh, where you can draw out the battle for a minute or two and that's where her uh, third skill will have see the most use i feel so for where she can be good i've tried to look into all of the content that i can see in the game and first of all i feel like she could be very useful in uh trial of ascension uh, i mean if you are a bit later game you already can complete the trial of ascension but i feel like she could also be useful in stuff like spires ascension or the wind uh wind ascension tower whatever it's called like the elemental ones since her cc abilities are pretty good and in a lot of cases enemies do not have any clans or immunity so you can make use of these skills and really cc the opponent a lot as well as of course she has two aoe abilities so you can use her for speed clears whenever tier the sets if you're into that uh, the second use i found for her is the battlefield uh, first of all two aoe abilities meaning that you can disable multiple opponents at once and if you can apply uh, this skill for example two times on all opponents uh, you are potentially looking at definitely winning the fight However, this means that you will need to have a strip and you will need to make sure that the enemy cannot cleanse those debuffs and having multiple people uh, fighting at once, if at least one of them has the cleanser, uh, you're looking potentially to lose the fight or lose at least Charlotte's potential in the fight. Uh, and for other users, of course, she's definitely decent in Arena and Brawl Arena. So for Irina, of course the environment is more controlled, so you can uh, get a good setup for those uh, longer drawn out fights and definitely make use of her uh, third skill as well as ultimate if you do manage to get to it. So if you look into the Bruiser sort of team, uh, you're potentially looking at decent wins, but you're looking to speed clear your way through the arena. I feel like she will not be the best option for that and very similar to Brawl Arena of course uh, you're potentially looking to draw out the fight for longer rather than end it quickly as if you do just uh, go for the one shot comes both the skill deceleration as well as the mana cost will not matter too much unless you are able to apply the mana cost pretty much instantly before the enemy uses any skills but yeah, other than that, I feel like she's pretty decent for PvP. Uh, however, if you are not into that and you are not able to build a specific combo with, for example, a stripper or a sort of a have a setup for her, uh, just her alone will not be useful in a lot of cases. So if you are looking to maximize on PvP and you are looking to 
build a specific combo around her, definitely get a few copies of her and I feel like she will be useful for that. But if you do not feel like uh, building the whole team around her, I feel like she will not be too much use and you should hold on on farming a lot of copies of her and maybe even hold for different units, so meaning that uh, the tickets you have, so for example I have a lot of essence tickets and some path of growth, maybe you want to hold them on for a different unit that comes out, of course the fire metal was a bit disappointing I think, uh, child is definitely better in terms of usability but uh, perhaps we'll get an even more useful unit, something like the wind ifrit or the bastet that we had previously. So, uh, whether you want to farm it up to you, I would say if you cannot build a combo around her, don't go too hard on it. I know I'm not uh, farming a lot of copies of her, I'll just mostly try to use my tickets for the hot time event, for the extra gold, and however many I have, uh, I'll get. I think I'm just going for like 2 or 3 copies, maybe to get the to awaken level 14, definitely not going for 5 copies, and uh, first of all it would require a lot of crystals and I don't feel like wasting it on her and I think there definitely will be a little better units there but yeah, hope you enjoyed the video uh, on my thoughts on these uh, 3 units and I'll see you in the next one